so let's get started. Okay, so uh, in this chapter, uh, we're going to talk about uh, paging and uh, smaller page tables. Okay, so uh, the idea here is uh, so far we've been discussing about uh, memory management and we've talked about the different approaches like relocation, uh, segmentation, and more recently we're talking about paging. We see that paging is uh, very advantageous because you have a fixed size chunk for both the virtual address space and uh, the physical memory. Now, there are still optimizations that can be done when it comes to paging. The main drawback of paging is that the page table is stored in the main memory. And as you know already, if you are going to access data from the main memory, it's quite uh, time consuming. So a solution which was presented in the previous chapter is uh, by providing a hardware support in the form of TLDs or translation look aside buffers. TLDs are essentially caches. They are uh, faster than accessing the main memory to get the page table, to get to the page table, but they are, they have smaller sizes. That means that there's only a limited number of information or a page number and uh, page frame, uh, uh, virtual page number and physical page number mapping that you can place in a TLB. A TLB is essentially a lookup table. But the advantage here is that the TLB is fast and it's quite, uh, yeah, it's fast. It can, the lookup can be done in parallel. In parallel. Now in this chapter, we're going to look, about, uh, to look at optimizing the size of the page table because this structure, this data structure, this page table has to be placed in the main memory. So to be able to do that, uh, it needs some storage space. So the main problem with uh, with uh, this uh, page table is that uh, the amount of memory required to store the, the, the page table will eventually grow. For example, uh, we usually have one page table for every process in the system. And let's say we have a 32-bit uh, address space with four kilobyte pages and a four-byte page table entry. So remember that we have a, a page table entry stored in the page table. So the size of each entry is four bytes. So given this configuration or these parameters, if we have a four kilobyte pages, that means uh, we're going to... Uh, how many bits? Okay. I will leave this up to you to compute how many bits to represent the, uh, the pages, right? the, the, the size of the page. And this will be the uh, appearance in uh, the memory here. So let's say we have the, this is for process A and this is the page table for uh, process A. So each entry is four bytes. So this is this each one is called a page table entry or PTE, and then this one is the physical memory, and each page here is of size four kilobytes. Now, the page table size can be determined by uh, using this computation. So we have two to the thirty-two, which is the thirty-two bit address space, and uh, divided by two to the twelve, okay, which is the four. Uh, Four kilobyte, uh, four kilobyte uh, uh, page size, and uh, simply subtract this, and you get four byte, and essentially you multiply it by four byte, and you get uh, four megabyte. So for a process like this with uh, with these particular parameters, this address space, then. Uh, the page table size will be uh, four megabytes. So it's quite large already. Okay, so the page table are too big and thus consume too much memory. So uh, what can we do? Like what can we? How how can we reduce the size of the page table? 
one way to do that is why don't we uh, enlarge the size of the pages in the previous example we only have four kilobyte for the page what if we increase the six up uh, what we in, what if we increase the page size to uh, 13 or to 16 kilobytes right so using the same computation but we have here 16 kilobytes so that will be two to the uh 16 right and then uh multiplied by four four bytes which is thus the size of the page table entry you get one mb per page table now the what we've accomplished here is that we were able to reduce the size of the page table but the problem is since the pages are very large 16 kb then this is uh, susceptible to uh, internal fragmentation so that is the problem so we need to balance in the in designing uh, in in managing the size of the page table we need to balance the storage and uh, also consider the effect of or if the if the approach will re, will uh, introduce internal fragmentation so let's say uh, let's take a look at a more detailed example of this problem so we have uh, an example here so we have uh, the virtual uh, address space here which is composed of uh, 16 uh, pages so it's a 16 kilobyte address space with uh, one kilobyte pages so so uh, okay so this, uh, this is 16 kilobytes so each page is composed of uh, one kilobyte and uh, this is the physical memory and this is the page table for this particular uh, uh, configuration. So we have the VPN zero, VPN zero, okay, mapped to PFN ten. So what is not shown here is the uh, the, uh, the VPN. So this is VPN zero, VPN one, VPN two, VPN three, uh, VPN four. That 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 up to the this is one this one is vpn uh, 15 right As you can see here uh, vpn uh, 15 is mapped uh, has is mapped to pfn 23 right so this is the uh, the configuration for a single uh, process with a 16 kb address space and as you can see in the page table it's quite sparse meaning uh we allocated if we if we don't manage the page table properly we allocated this much uh, size for the page table but only a few of this uh, of, uh, only a few rows of the uh, page table has entries right? so it this is quite a waste so as you can see this is a waste stage and this one is a waste so most of the page table is unused and full of invalid entries so how do we solve those problems? So one approach is to use uh, a hybrid of paging and uh, uh, segmentation. So that means, uh, remember that in the idea of segmentation, uh, each uh, block of memory or each type of segment in the address space is given a specific uh, base and limit registers in the, that, that points to the physical memory. So that is what is the approach here. So in order to reduce the memory over of the page table, uh, the base will not point to the segment itself, but rather to hold the physical address of the page table. So in the original sense of segmentation, the base register will point to the physical address of that particular uh, section or segment of the process of virtual address space. This time, instead of the actual location of the segment or the section, it is the physical address of the page table for that particular section. So it's a hybrid between uh, a hybrid be uh, of uh, paging and segmentation. The bounce register is used to indicate the end of the page table instead of the end of the actual uh, segment of the process uh, address space. 
So how does this work? Each process has three page tables associated with it because we know that uh, uh, in the in when we discuss segmentation, we have uh, uh, we have code, uh, we have the heap, and we have the stack. So these three sections of uh, uh, process will be given or will be yes will be given or assigned uh, page tables. So we have three page tables. When process is running, the base register for each of the segments contains the physical address of a linear page table for that segment. So if we're going to do this hybrid approach, then we have to change some configuration in the interpret or some we have to change the interpretation of the virtual address space. So remember that our primary input in this uh, in this uh, uh, topic or in this uh, in in the translation will be the virtual address so we need to change how we view the the uh, the address the virtual address space or the actual address itself so as you can see here uh, tradition if you don't have if you just have pure paging we will not have this uh, uh, segment number here the segment number field here in the virtual ad. So, so in this example, we have a 32-bit uh, virtual address space, and uh, since we have we are having four kilobyte pages, so it will require 12 bits to represent that by the offset. So this is bit zero to 12 that will be the offset, and the virtual page number will be from bits 13 to 29, and then bits 30 and bits. Uh, a bit 30 and 31 will be the segment number and this will be the configuration so 00, zero will be unused 0, 01 will be used to indicate the code segment 10 for heat and 11 for the stack so this is the configuration now uh, what will happen when uh, a tld miss uh, of course, on in this hybrid approach. So remember, what do we mean by TLB? Means meaning the TLB does not have an entry. Uh, it uh, the entry the pa uh, page frame number for the particular for the input uh, virtual uh, for the input uh, virtual page number is not present in the in the TLB. Right. So. What happens is that the hardware uses the segment bits. This is the, this is the uh, SN field in the address to determine which base and bounds pair to use. The hardware then takes the physical address on the uh, base register therein and combines it with the VPN as follows to form the address of the page table end. Because we are interested in uh, finding the page table entry that is present in the page table of the process. So this will be the code for that. Uh, the segment number is just the virtual address, the given uh, virtual address. And then we perform a bitwise end with the segment mask to get the. So here the segment, the segment mask will be one one and then one one and then zero for the rest of the bits and then we uh, shift it to the right to get the actual value for the segment number then in order to get the vpn or we need to get the vpn for this is the virtual address so we need to get this part of the virtual address so we simply end that with the vpn mask and that will the VPN mask will be 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and then 0, 0, 0, 0. So that will be the actual value, the VPN mask. And then we perform a VPN shift, that, uh, a shift to the right for the, to, to get the actual value for the uh, virtual uh, page number. And then the actual address of the page table entry will be the, this is the base register. And then this is just the, the it depends on the value if it's from code or heap or the stack and then you add that to uh, the vpn 
and multiply by the size of the PPE uh, to get the actual address of the PPE. From there, you can now get the page from the PPE. You can now get the uh, physical or page frame number, and you can place that in the TLD. Okay. So, what are the problems with the hybrid approach? If you have a large but sparsely used heap, you can still end up with a lot of page stable waste. So, uh, all right, we were able to solve the uh, internal fragmentation problem partially, but it's still present, especially if we have a heap that is not uh, used uh, most of the time. And also, external fragmentation can arise because the page tables can be arbitrary in size. So there is now, again, we now have the, the page tables can differ in size. Let's say the page table for the, for the code segment will be larger than the page table for the stack or the heap. So the, this variability in sizes of the page table for each segment can actually result to external fragmentation. So that, uh, these two are the main problems when uh, combining uh, segmentation and paging. But the idea is simple, right? So this is the virtual address. You simply split it into the offset within the page, the VPN number, the page number, and then this is for the segments. So there's a combination of segmentation and uh, paging. So the next one is uh, the next approach is multi-level page table. So this is, as I mentioned before, is actually used in uh, x86-64 the computers, Intel processors, 64-bit processors from Intel. So what is what does this? Uh, how does this multi-level page table uh, work? Basically, it just provide uh, additional indirection. So we normally refer to the traditional paging process as a linear page table. Now in multi-level page table, what we do is to uh, convert it into a tree-like structure. Right? Actually, you convert it into a tree. Okay? So you chop up the page table into page size units. So it's basically like paging the page table. That's the idea. We chop up the page table into page sized units. If an entire page of page table entries is invalid, don't allocate that page of the page table at all. So uh, I don't know if you can visualize this, but the idea is uh, you split the page table into fixed size uh, page table, uh, the size of the page table. So. Uh, if none of the entries is valid in that page, don't allocate that. That's the idea. And to track whether a page of the page table is valid, we use a new structure called a page directory. So in addition to the actual page table that is used in the translation of the virtual address to the uh, physical address, basically the conversion and translation process, we introduce another data structure, which is called the page directory. So the page directory is not internally used. I, 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 I'm not sure though, but uh, this is uh, somehow uh, an indirection, but this is not the actual page table used by the process during the translation. So it's more of a lookup uh, look uh, table to get, the, uh, to get to the actual page table. So let's take a look at this illustration and how uh, this works. So on the left, we have the linear page table. So this is the traditional page table. So we have a page table base register and it contains the starting address of the page table for a process. So as you can see, this is the page table and uh, we have three columns here. We have valid, uh, protection uh, column and the actual uh, uh, 
page frame or physical frame number. Right? So this is how it will look like. And uh, this one is uh, an actual uh, page table uh, uh, entry. Right? Now, uh, in the traditional linear page table, you have to allocate all of this uh, uh, chunk of memory for the page table of a process. But as you can see, as you can observe, only two of these uh, page table entries are actually uh, used. This one and this one. Okay? So, uh, in order to optimize this, or in order to convert this to a multi-level page table, this is what's going to happen. So, the page table uh, base register will be 200, and then uh, the PFN. So, this will be this. This is the new page uh, direct. The new the new data structure page directory. And what will happen is uh, these uh, two entries here will be invalid, and then the 201 and 203 will be uh, allocated. Okay? Or uh, these entries here will be allocated as actual uh, page table uh, entries. Okay? So the idea here is instead of allocating everything you can just allocate uh, a few of the uh, page table entries as long as they fit in the size of a page okay so uh, a key takeaway here is that the the page directory is just another level of indirection right and you simply have to consult this uh, you simply have to consult the valid uh, invalid field or bit to determine whether the page table will be allocated so in this way we, we are we are able to conserve uh, space right? because we don't need to allocate let's say this page one of uh, page table and then page two of the page table unlike if we just have a linear uh, page table and to be able to accomplish that we introduce this uh, page directory. Okay, so what are the page directory entries? The page directory contains one entry per page of the page table. So it contains one ent entry per page of the page table. Okay. It consists of a number of page dire directory entries. So this is a page table entry. This is called a page table entry. And this one is a uh, uh page directory entry so this one fits in a page right? this one should fit in a page so that, that's an important requirement uh this block should fit in a page the size of a page and the pde has a valid bit and page frame number as shown here the valid bit and the page frame number okay so what are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, multi-level page table? The adva one advantage is that uh, it only allocates page table space in proportion to the amount of address space uh, that is being used. Okay? So there are no excess, uh, excess allocations. This one is not used, so don't allocate that. Okay? But these two here are used. Okay. There are entries, so allocate that. That's the one advantage. The OS can grab uh, the OS can grab the next free page when it needs to allocate or grow a page table. So uh, this is accomplished because the page table fits in a single page. So unlike in the page uh, segmentation with paging where in the var the sizes of the page table uh, will will vary depending on the segment here uh, in multi level paging the size of the page table uh, essentially fits in a single page so if you need to extend 
if you want uh if you, if you want to grow the if the kernel will uh, or if a process or a kernel would like to grow the page table for a process it can simply grab the next page with easily with no uh, uh complex calculations etc as one advantage now the disadvantage is that multi-level page table is a small example of time space trade-off so what we mean by that is By introducing the page directory, we added another step in the process. And of course, when we add another step in the process, we further uh, reduce the performance in terms of speed. Okay? So most likely, the page, uh, the page directory will also reside in the main memory. Okay? So that will be a problem. Adding another level of indirection will affect the performance in terms of speed but we are able to achieve uh, the efficient utilization of we are able to achieve these advantages by doing multi-level page tables so this uh, the uh, this uh, this will actually uh, uh, affect the performance and of course it introduces additional complexity which uh, might uh, be prone to error later. So, as I've been mentioning, the multi level page table is basically just adding another level of indirect indirection. So, by introducing the page directory. So, indirection place a uh, page table pages wherever we want, like in, uh, uh, like in physical memory. So we just, in a way, we're just like treating the page table like any piece of data in the uh, in the main memory in, in a traditional sense. Right? So let's have a detailed uh, multi-level uh, paging example. So to understand the idea behind multi-level page tables better, let's see an example. Okay, so we have this uh, address space here. So we have uh, code uh, occupying these two pages, and then we have heap occupying these two pages also, and we have the stack occupying these uh, two pages here, the last uh, few two pages uh, of the virtual address space. And this will be the parameter. So the address space is 16 kilobytes. So now, uh, if we have 16 kilobytes, so we have 13 bits to represent the virtual address. Uh, 14 bits to uh, represent the virtual address. And uh, if we are uh, given that the page size is 64 bytes, so we will need uh, six bytes for that. Uh, six bits, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the size of the page. So the, vir the virtual address is 14 bits. The VPN is 8 bits, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The offset is 6 bits, and the page table entry will be 2 to the 8. So this is the, this is the field for the VPN. Therefore, the page table, the number of page table entries will be 2 to the 8. So that's the, the, the array of uh, 4 bytes, of 4 bytes each. So how do we set up the, how do we, given this configuration, how do we set up the multi-level uh, paging? Right? So first we need to set up the page directory index. So the page directory needs one entry per page of the page table. So we have uh, uh, 2 to the 8 uh, or 156 page table entries. So how many entries are we going to have in the page directory? So given this configuration, we're going to have uh, 16 entries. Okay? So because uh, the size of uh, the size of the page is 64 bytes, so we're going to have uh, 16 uh, entries okay, for the page directory. And if, so this will be the configuration now of the other. So the VPN, 
the virtual page number uh, from the eight bits that it has, the uh, these four bits here, bits 10 to 13, will be used for the page directory index two to the four that will be uh, 16, right? So what will happen is if the page directory entry is invalid, uh, it will raise an exception uh, telling that uh, the uh, that particular entry is invalid. So it did not be allocated. Now, if the page directory entry is valid, uh, there is additional work to do right? because uh, if we are if, if we are given an address and we were we extracted the page directory index and then we consulted the page directory and it says that it's invalid, okay, it's an exception. You're trying to answer memory that is not or a page table that uh, entry uh, a directory entry page directory entry that does not exist. Okay. Now, if the page directory entry is valid, we have more work to do. So we need to fetch the page table entry, the PTE, from the page of the page table pointed to by this uh, page directory entry. So it's a valid uh, entry. So we have to get the page table entry. So that's our goal. So to do that, uh, this page uh, this we have a page table uh, index, PTN, PT index here. This is used to uh index in the page table can then be used to index into the page table itself and then from there we can now get the actual page table entry so to sim uh, for a simpler notation here to get the actual page table entry address uh, we need to get the page frame number from the page uh, directory entry, remember that our uh, where is that? We have a page, uh, okay, so we have a page directory entry, which is a valid bit and a page frame number. So this is our page, each row here is a page directory entry. So valid and then the page frame number. So in the, uh, in finding the PTE, in finding the page table entry, specifically in this area, we're going to extract this uh, page frame number from the uh, page directory entry. entry. And then, uh, So this is that part here. We extract the PFN from the page directory entry by shifting to the left, okay? And then we add the, so this is the index now. We add that, we add the index uh, multiplied by the size of the page table entry. And that is how we get the address of uh, the page table entry wherein uh, we can actually get the actual contents of the memory once we have this page table entry. So let's have uh, a detailed example. Right. So uh, using this configuration, using this setup, right, what will be the uh, what will be the contents of the memory? for for this uh, configuration this example so this is what it will look like so we we have uh, uh three directory a uh, three memory structures here we have the page directory we have the page of the page table so this is a page of the page table at a uh, page frame number 100 and this is the page of the page table at page frame number 101 so what do we mean by that? Right. So this is our this is the virtual address space. Right? It's code heap and uh, the stack. Right. So the
the page frame number here is 100 so this is valid so uh, in allocating the page table for this process uh, it will use the page directory to specify okay this is a valid uh, page directory entry and the page frame number here this this is uh, in the actual memory but instead of actual data it contains a page table okay, the page table so pfn 100 and let's say the page tape uh, and uh, uh, this is the that frame okay what are the elements of that so we have uh, this one uh, page frame 10 which is uh, valid and then page frame 23 which is uh, valid also so if you look at the code here oh this is zero one two three four five so assuming we assume here that uh the uh this is the for the code this is for the code and this is these two uh entries here is for the code are for the code and these two entries here are for the uh for the heap Okay, so uh, 100 zero zero is uh, 4. So, so this is index 0, VPN 0, VPN 1, VPN, uh, VPN, VPN 0, VPN 1, VPN 2, VPN 3, VPN 4, VPN 5. Okay, so we allocate this. Uh, of course, we have to fill in uh, everything because this is the size of the page. And this one is for the stack. Okay. So this will be the total amount of memory that will be used for for the for this particular uh, example. So given this, uh, how do we perform the translation? So we have this uh, uh, this uh, configuration. How do we perform the translation? So let's have an example. So let's translate this virtual address 3f80 in hex now if we convert this to binary so remember that uh, each digit hex digit represents four bits so zero will be zero uh, eight will be this one uh, two to the three okay eight and then f all ones and then three is one all of these are all uh uh 4 8 12 14 bits 14 bit address space and the first thing that we have to do is to extract the virtual uh, page number vpn so the virtual page number in our configuration here is from bits uh, 6 to 13 so so given this uh, setup so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we'll start here this will be our VP, uh, VPN, which is this one, right? And then the rest will be the offset, which is this one. Then from the VPN, we're going to extract the page directory index, which is this one. This is the page directory entry. So we have uh, 1111. And Given this, uh, so let's say this is one one, uh, this is one 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 one. If we look up at the memory, okay, so this is uh, we are going to obtain uh, this valid entry uh, one o one here, the end. Okay, so let's say uh, we have a configuration here, and so. Let's assume that uh, the page directory index 111, we obtain this. Uh, 16. So we obtain this uh, uh, page frame number 101. So we're going to go to this uh, page in the memory and we, ne we need to get to next get the uh, index into the page of uh, page table uh, at pfn101 so this is the index into the page directory this one will be the index into the 
uh, actual page table. Okay. So actual page table, so we have 1110. So if, if we go back, so this is uh, this is this is actually that entry 1110 because this is 11111. So we hit this part, this entry. Okay. So we obtain a valid uh, page frame number of 55. Which is actually uh, this one. This 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 is the entry here. Which is hex zero x thirty seven. And what we're going to do is to get to the final address is to simply uh, shift to the left six bits. The uh, uh, this value here. Okay, so we simply uh, this we simply shift this to the left, uh, and then we add the offset, okay, the actual uh, offset, and then we get this value. So in the physical memory, this is the if uh, in the virtual address uh, space, this is the address. If we are using uh, multi-level paging eventually this will get translated to the actual physical address of uh, 0x0 dc0 so that's how uh, how this works okay so again the advantage of uh, multi-level paging is that you reduce the amount of memory because you only allocate uh, the pages that are needed to contain the page table entries essentially it's paging the page table so what we've shown so far is a two level uh, in direction a right? two level in direction but it's also possible to increase the level of indirection uh, for example more from uh, from uh, for more than uh, two levels so let's say we have this address address uh, address uh, representation so we have zero to nine, uh, that's the offset. So two to the nine. And then uh, if we have two to the nine, two to the eight here, we'll have, then we'll have uh, two to the nine, then we'll have uh, 512 byte of uh, page size. Okay. And then the VPN, let's say is uh, 21 bits. Okay. So this is a 30 uh, 30 bit uh, address space right, to the 30 and uh, we can actually still uh, since this is very large and this is the page size okay, we can actually still uh, uh, divide this further so this is how uh, it will look like so the vpn can be uh, the traditional approach would be to have the VPN to split it into two, the page directory index and the page table index. Right? So as, as you can see, the page entry per page will be 128 uh, uh, PTEs. Right? So it's quite large. So we can still further split that and we can have multiple uh, page directories. So if, if our page directory has two to the 14 entries, it spans not one page, but one to eight, okay? So to remedy this problem, we build a further level of the, of the tree by splitting the page directory itself into multiple pages of page directory to be able to fit, because our goal is to fit the, the page table in a page, within a page, within page size. So this is how it can be done. Okay, so uh, let's look at the control flow. What happens when we have uh, multi-level paging? So first, uh, again, as, as, as shown, as demonstrated in the example earlier, you have to first get the VPN, virtual page number. This is how to do that. And then first you look, once you got the VPN, you look that up in the TLB. Okay. So, if there is a TLB hit, meaning this entry is in the TLB, and you have the correct uh, permissions, what you're going to do is the, the usual. Okay. You get the offset by uh, bit 
doing a bitwise end with the offset mask to get the offset, the physical address is already available in the TLB entry. So you get the physical uh, frame number, shift it to the left, and then you perform a bitwise or of the offset. So you get the actual physical address of uh, uh, the physical address from this virtual address. And you can now access the memory and assign that to a register. Now, if you don't have uh, the correct permissions, then you'll have some protection for. Now, if you now uh, if there is no if the entry is not in the TLB, right? Uh, this VPN is not in the TLB, then you need to perform a lookup, multi-level uh, lookup. So, how 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 does it work? So first you need to get the uh, page directory index. So from the VPN, you're going to and perform a bitwise end with the uh, page directory index, and then you shift to the right for the page directory shift to get the actual index. And then you need to get the page directory entry address. So to get the page directory entry address, you need to access the page directory base register. So uh, the page, uh, the address of the page directory is stored in the page directory base register shown here. Then you add the to that value the index you obtained here, multiplied by the size of the uh, PDE page directory entry. So you get the PDE address. Then uh, once you get the PDE address, okay, you can now get the actual uh, PDE, uh, PDE address. You can now get the actual page directory entry by accessing the memory. So remember, the PDE is also in the uh, memory. So you can get uh, the page directory is in the main memory. So you get the main memory and you get the PDE. And then if the page directory entry is valid or is not valid, then you issue a segmentation fault. Right? Otherwise, if the page directory is valid, we now need to get the page uh, table entry. So to get the page table entry, we need to get the page table index, which is equal, uh, is obtained by ending the VPN and the page, uh, page table mask. Right? And then you can get now the page table entry address as shown earlier by uh, using these uh, uh, computations. And then once, then we retrieve the page table entry and uh, again from the memory. So if we, if the PT entry is valid or is, is not valid, we uh, generate a segmentation fault. Otherwise, uh, it also check whether we have the correct permissions so if not, there is an exception protection fault. And otherwise, that means we were is a valid memory uh, entry. We insert to the TLB, the virtual page number, the uh, PTE page frame number, and the uh, PTE uh, protection base to the TLB. And then we restart the instruction. After restarting the instruction, we are now guaranteed that the uh TLB has the entry has the PFN for that particular memory address that we are referencing okay so so it's quite a lot actually in the in the multi-level uh, uh page table control flow but the basic idea is the same you first consult the TLB if it's not in the TLB and if you have multi-level paging you have to do several steps first by consulting the page directory and then after consulting the page directory you have to consult the actual page table and get the actual address or the actual physical address and get the actual data from that uh, physical uh, memory okay so that's the idea so what we've done so far is to show how to solve how to minimize the uh, how to reduce the size of the page table by making sure that uh, we only allocate uh, we only allocate memory 
for page table uh, entries that are actually being used. It's the idea here. So and there are other approaches actually to improve the, the, the use of the page table. So the first one, another one is called the inverted page table. So in this inverted page table, you keep a single page table that has an entry for each physical page of the system. So you have a global, a globe, essentially you have a global page table that has the mapping, has the mapping uh, to the actual physical uh, pages in the physical memory. The entry tells us which process is using the page and which vertical uh, virtual page of the process maps to this physical page. Okay, so uh, I, ho I hope you can visualize this, but the idea here is uh, you have a global, instead of having a, a page table per process, okay, you have, instead of having a page table per process, you have a single uh, page table for everybody to use. Okay? And if you're using a, a page, if you're using a page, uh, if a process is using a page, that process will be uh, placed in this inverted page table to indicate that, let's say, the process ID, uh, that process is using this particular uh, page table. Right? So that's the idea of having uh, inverted page tables. So we'll stop here and we'll continue uh, uh, on the next uh, chapter.